Yes, bulking in the traditional sense, gaining much more than 1% of your body weight per month, is probably dead. That's what a recent study by Eric Helms and colleagues suggests. In their study, Eric and his colleagues had trained participants with an average bench max of around 225 pounds perform a complete eight-week resistance training routine composed of squatting, bench pressing, and several back and arm movements. The three groups only differed in one way. In the maintenance group, the participants aimed to maintain their body weight over eight weeks. The moderate surplus group aimed for 5% over maintenance calories. The high surplus group aimed for 15% over maintenance calories. For a male weighing 80 kilograms and with maintenance calories of around 3,000, this is what these protocols would look like. The researchers measured muscle growth by ultrasounding the thickness of the quadriceps, biceps, and triceps at a few sites before and after the eight-week training program and diet. Additionally, they also assessed body fat gained using skinfold calipers. Well, which group gained the most muscle? All groups ended up observing similar muscle growth. Importantly, the 5% and 15% surplus groups ended up gaining a similar amount of body weight, illustrating the idea that achieving a very specific rate of weight gain is difficult, even with the help of experienced researchers. The researchers found weak evidence, in statistical terms, of bicep growth scaling with body weight gained. There are two important limitations here. First, the sample size was very, very small, at only 17 participants total, due to the COVID pandemic. Second, the groups generally didn't grow much muscle to begin with, as you'd expect in a trained population in only eight weeks. This makes it difficult to parse out any small differences. Is that really enough to declare bulking truly dead? Fortunately, there have been more studies on the topic of bulking. By the end of this video, you'll have learned about all of them and will understand how to diet to make lean gains. Just like this video, MyoAdapt was designed with all the research on training in mind. MyoAdapt is a training app that we've been working on. It's a coach in your pocket at a fraction of the price of a good coach. We used all the latest scientific research to build it. I can't wait to share it with you all. The only reason it isn't out yet is because we want it to be as good as it can possibly be and blow everything else out of the water. The good news? If you go to myadapt.com now and sign up with your email, you'll be notified when MyAdapt launches and you'll receive a lifetime discount if you sign up when it launches. Back to bulking. Why did aggressive bulking first become a widespread practice? Well, a group of researchers at California State University may have played a role when they published one of the very first studies on bulking in 2002. Interestingly, Rosnick and colleagues didn't actually intend to study bulking. They intended to study the effects of supplementation with various carb and protein powders on hypertrophy. But in the end, through supplementation, two groups in the study ended up eating 1,800 calories more than they usually would. 4,300 calories versus their usual 2,500. The maintenance group, a control group, just stayed at their usual calories. The results? All groups gained muscle. The maintenance group stayed at essentially the same body weight and gained around one and a half kilograms of fat-free mass while losing a tiny bit of fat in just eight weeks. The groups consuming high calorie supplements, on the other hand, gained around three kilograms over eight weeks. The kicker? Nearly all of that was fat-free mass, suggesting that they grew around twice as much muscle as the maintenance group. As you can imagine, this study naturally created some hype around the idea of bulking. There are a few important caveats to this study though. First, the macronutrient distribution wasn't controlled for between the groups. So the group taking additional protein and carbohydrates ended up consuming more protein than the other groups, which creates a confounding effect. Second, the only measurements of muscle growth taken were fat-free mass increases and circumferences. Fat-free mass measurements can easily be swayed by water weight, for example, associated with having more food in the digestive tract, having more glycogen in your muscles, or simply consuming more sodium. Similarly, circumference measurements aren't ideal, particularly in a study on bulking, since this type of measurement doesn't tell us whether we gain muscle or fat. Finally, the control group generally had a bit more muscle and strength to begin with, suggesting they may have been a bit more trained. What about more trained lifters? The next study by Garth et al. looked at exactly this. Over eight to 12 weeks, high level athletes from a variety of sports gained either around 0.75% of body weight per month in the lean gains group, or around 1.5% of body weight per month in the dreamer bulk group. 
all groups consumed over 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. These athletes had some experience in the gym already, with an average squat max of around 265 pounds in a mixed male-female sample. Across both groups, all athletes lifted four times a week. The Dreamer Bulk group gained around 1.7 kilograms of lean body mass, whereas the Lean Gains group gained around 1.2 kilograms of lean body mass. While this represents a roughly 50% difference in lean body mass gained, recall the limitations of lean body mass and fat-free mass assessments for bulking. Water weight matters. While the Dreamer Bulk group gained a bit more lean mass, they also gained around five times more fat than the Lean Gains group. While the actual difference wasn't as large as a five-fold difference might make it seem, if they kept bulking at this pace over a year, that could have been an additional six kilograms or 13 pounds of fat gained. Strength gains were pretty similar between the two groups in the bench press, row, and squat row max. This next study found conflicting and interesting results. In their study, Smith and colleagues recruited participants with at least six months of lifting experience. The researchers gave all participants a protein and carb supplement to increase calorie intake and had them perform a three day per week lifting routine. They took both direct and indirect measurements of muscle hypertrophy. Indirect measurements of fat-free mass or lean body mass suffered the aforementioned limitations. Instead, direct measurements, such as measuring muscle thickness via ultrasound, overcome these issues. Instead of using a traditional controlled trial approach, where a bulk group was compared to a control group or even to a slower bulk group, Smith and colleagues simply had everyone bulk to see whether there were any clear trends in the participants' results. Did the participants who bulked fastest or hardest see the best muscle growth? Not really. For the elbow flexors, muscle growth was generally lower as participants gained more weight. For the quadriceps, muscle growth was slightly greater with greater rates of weight gain. So, as far as the best measurements of muscle growth, the direct ones, Bulking faster didn't clearly boost muscle growth. The authors also attempted to see how much of the weight gained was lean body mass versus fat mass, as the rate of weight gain increased. As you'd expect, as the rate of weight gain increased, the ratio of muscle fat gained to fat gained worsened. However, at around 2% of body weight gained per month, participants appeared to gain 100% lean body mass and no fat. Now, I already hear you saying, Milo, that doesn't seem legit. I've been training for a while, and if I tried to gain 2% of body weight per month, I'd need bariatric surgery ASAP. Well, I concur. Again, keep in mind that indirect measurements like lean body mass or fat-free mass will generally overestimate muscle growth or how lean your gains are. Seeing as how the highest quality results, the ultrasound measurements, were conflicting, I wouldn't see this study as strong support for aggressive rates of weight gain particularly considering how wide the 95% highest density probability intervals were. That said, strength gains were generally higher with higher rates of weight gain. Those are all the studies on bulking. That's right, we only have four studies somewhat directly looking at bulking. However, based on these studies, here's how I recommend you should diet to maximize muscle growth. I'll give practical examples at the end of the video, so stick around. If you're new to the gym and you have more room to grow, or you're willing to gain a bit more fat, whether it's because you're willing to cut more often or you actively want to gain body fat and keep it on, you should aim to gain one to one and a half percent of your body weight per month. If instead you've been training for a while and you want to make lean gains, gain around 0.5 to 1% of your body weight per month. I'm providing a range here because, as you might have noticed from these studies, achieving a specific rate of gain perfectly is very difficult. If you're in doubt about what camp you fall into, I would opt for the latter approach. You'll probably still nearly maximize muscle growth, but won't have to cut nearly as often. One of my hotter takes is that since most people struggle to lose weight and keep it off, body weight gaining should be approached cautiously, at least for those people. To end this video, here are two practical examples. Let's say you had a reasonable body fat percentage of around 10 to 25% for men, or around 18 to 30% for women. Let's say you weigh 75 kilograms or 165 pounds. You should aim to gain 1 to 1.5% of your body weight per month, aka 0.75 to 1.125 kilograms, aka 1.6 to 2.5 pounds per month if you weigh 75 kilograms. Once you've calculated your maintenance calories, aim to eat around 10% above your maintenance calories. And you? You're more advanced. You've been lifting for a few years, 
and you want to keep getting bigger without needing to cut too often. For you, gain weight at a pace of 0.5 to 1% of your body weight per month. If you weigh 90 kilograms or around 200 pounds, that would be 0.45 kilograms to about 0.9 kilograms per month, or one to two pounds per month gained. Do you disagree with me? Are traditional bulks still goaded for real for real and S tier? Let me know down below and I'll respond to the most upvoted comments. If you'd like some real S tier gym clothing, check out rascalapparel.com and shop using code WOLF at checkout for 10% off. Most durable, comfortable, slick gym clothing in the game. Dr. My Wolf, bulking, we're out.